Okay, so I've defined matter and energy. I've defined potential and kinetic energy. But why do humans need to consume matter and energy? And this is a question I like to ask in my classroom. And I typically get an answer like this. Because we will die without it. Well, I'm not going to debate that that's true, but that's not actually an answer to my question. Why will we die without it? That's just a, that, that's what we call in science a just-so statement. We will die without it. Well, why do we need it? What's the reason we need it? Why will we die without it? So to understand this, I want you to, again, think about a house. This time it's not a warm summer's day. It's just a house. And what happens to a house over time? A house goes through wear and tear, right? Based on things like wind damage, the roof will have holes in it or, or shingles will come off, windows could break, uh, doors and, and other structures in the house can become damaged, the foundation can crack. Wear and tear occurs in the house. Now, if the house isn't occupied by a human, that damage is going to simply accumulate and the house will become what we often describe as run down and unlivable. The house becomes run down if there's not someone living in it. Now, when a person's living in a house, it's not that it doesn't undergo wear and tear, it's that we respond to that wear and tear. So what does the occupant do, potentially, to maintain life in this structure, which is their house? Well, they repair it, right? They patch holes in the roof by bringing in new shingles. They bring in new matter and use energy to move that matter into the correct position. They install new window panes if necessary. They bring in new matter and use energy to move it into position. They install new hinges and return the door to its proper position by bringing in new matter and using energy to move it into position. And they replace damaged wood, brick, or other surfaces on the house like siding, thereby bringing in new matter and using energy to position it as a way of maintaining the house in its functional state. So in order for a house to, maintain, uh, to remain livable, matter must be available to repair worn out structure, and energy must be available to move that matter into the proper position. Now, I want you to think about two words in this sentence. The words house and livable. I'm going to change them from house and livable to cell and alive. In order for a cell to remain alive, matter must be available to repair worn out structures, and energy must be available to move that matter into the proper position. Why do humans need to consume matter and energy? We'll die without it. Why? Because human bodies are composed of cells, which require matter and energy to maintain their structure and keep them alive. This means that the physical laws that govern matter and energy's behavior have consequence for living organisms. And in the next few videos, we'll explore those laws and those consequences.